Hi friends and welcome to this time of gathering around the Word of God together. I'm glad that you've chosen to join me as we journey together through the Word of God today as brothers and sisters in Christ. We have two readings today. Our first is from Psalm 23. So if you open your Bible, it's in the book of Psalms, chapter 23, so Psalm 23. And our New Testament reading is our Gospel reading from John 10, verses 1 to 11, 22 to 30. I want to invite you to follow in the Word of God, uh, both through your Bible, if you have one nearby, or by reading with me and following with me as I read through on the screen. We're going to be starting with Psalm 23, and I'm reading from the New International Version of the Holy Bible. And it reads as follows, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And our New Testament reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 11, 22 to 30. Again, I'm reading from the New International Version of the Holy Bible, and it reads as follows from, verse, from chapter 10, verse 1. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And then from verse 22. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe, because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will, will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you today and we thank you that through the Holy Scriptures from readings from Psalm 23 and John 10, that you would help us understand what it is you're saying to us. Through the reading, hearing, understanding of Holy Scripture, that you would add a blessing to, to our lives and help us grow in our relationship with you, Almighty God. That you would strengthen us in the ways you want us to go. Open our eyes, our hearts, our minds to receive from you today. So, Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing to you, our Rock and our Redeemer. Jesus Christ our Lord, now and always. Amen. Friends, we continue our Easter journey. As we continue our journey from Easter Resurrection Sunday with the empty tomb and the risen Christ, through Ascension Day to the moment of empowerment through the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday, we continue our journey through this, this season of Easter in the life of our church and the church of God, the one who is the risen Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. So far, we've, we've encountered people having encounters with Christ. 
We've journeyed through Mary having an encounter with Jesus, the disciples and Thomas, last week Peter and other disciples again encountering Jesus. But as they've encountered Jesus, they've encountered the risen Christ who can turn doubt into faith, doubters into disciples. And it's the same risen Christ that, that restores relationships. It's in the season of the church calendar of Easter through which we explore the resurrected Christ and what impact this risen Christ can, can have on us as Christians as we discover more about the risen Christ and what it means for us to be an Easter resurrection people. Now, friends, last week, Sunday, we explored our reading from John 21, and we, we encountered the disciples going fishing and Jesus reestablishing relationship. We encountered the questioning and the reestablishment of Peter through the question that Jesus asked him. Simon, son of John, do you love me? He asked. And the declaration of love and loyalty to Jesus was there and affirmed. Jesus also commissioned him by sending him out with the words, feed my sheep. Now with that in mind, friends, today our readings continued the shepherding imagery. With both our readings speaking about sheep and a shepherd and the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. In our reading from Psalm 23, it even starts with the words, the Lord is my shepherd. Now let, let's be honest here for a moment. As I, I was reading the, the Psalm 23 passage, how many of us mouthed those words or perhaps read them aloud as, because we know these words. We can mouth them without even looking. If we hear Psalm 23, it's the Lord is my shepherd. But throughout that entire psalm, the King David, as he writes this psalm, continues to develop the shepherding theme and what that relationship with the shepherd looks like. Now, for me, that Psalm 23 is one of the jewels in the Bible. It's one of those passages that speaks to me regardless of the situation in which I find myself, of the constant goodness and love of God, and of the, the trust that we need to have in Jesus, who is our risen Christ. There are other people who associate Psalm 23 with the death of a loved one and with funerals. And this is due to the popularity of Psalm 23 as a, as a text for funeral sermons and the comforting message that these words bring into those moments of grief and of loss. In our reading from John 10, we encounter a portion of scripture in which Jesus is using an analogy of a shepherd when he's referring to himself as the Christ and the Messiah. So friends, today I want to briefly unpack for us, what it means for us to call the risen Christ, uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our shepherd. So friends, let's ask that question. What does it mean for us to proclaim Jesus as our shepherd? Well, for us to proclaim Jesus, the risen Christ, as our shepherd, we, we need to realize that this is a self-acknowledgement that we are Jesus' sheep. As we say, the Lord is my shepherd. We're making a declaration of Jesus' shepherdship over our lives. We're declaring that we accept Jesus as our shepherd and all that that entails from us as his sheep. It is the proclamation of our relationship with Jesus, the risen Christ as our shepherd. Now, I feel that in order for us to truly understand what this means, we need to look at our reading from John 10. In John 10, Jesus, through the symbolic use of the shepherding imagery, spells out who he is and who his sheep are. Now, as an Easter people, we know that Jesus rose and he, he overcame the grave, that he is the true Messiah. But there was still some confusion in that space. Firstly, Jesus distinguishes himself as different from those who have come before. Let me try Let me say that again. Jesus distinguishes the difference between who he is as the Christ, as the true Messiah, as the one who, before this is before he rose from the grave, is the one who will rise from the grave. Our shepherd, as opposed to those who are thieves and of robbers. That Jesus is the one who has come to point and reveal God to the people, as opposed to those false prophets and false messiahs who have come before him, claiming to be the legitimate messiah. The one who have come to liberate the Jewish nation by force for their own selfish gain. Friends, our reading tells us 
that the shepherd, who is the legitimate leader of the sheep, comes in through the proper means. Through the gate which the, the gatekeeper opens. Because the gatekeeper knows the shepherd. That's the first thing we hear. That the gatekeeper opens because the gatekeeper knows the shepherd. Can we perhaps say Peter in this regard? As the one who was charged with feed my sheep. But the sheep in our reading also respond to the voice of the shepherd. In other words, they know each other. Because the shepherd calls each of the sheep by name. He, he knows his sheep. And the shepherd has a personal relationship with his sheep. And he calls them out of the sheep pen. They know each other. The shepherd and the sheep. The, the sheep recognize his voice. And the shepherd recognizes the sheep. The sheep then, then follow the shepherd as he leads them out. Because the sheep trust the shepherd. As they know the shepherd has their best interests in heart. In all that he does for them. Now this is contrasted later in our reading. It says, whereas the thief or the robber only have self-seeking and destructive intentions for the sheep. The sheep do not trust the stranger. In fact, we're told that, that if they hear a stranger's voice calling them, they run away at the sound of that stranger's voice. Jesus spells it out for us and makes it clear in verse 10 and 11 of our reading. He says to us, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. In other words, life abundantly. He goes on in verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And friends, we know that Jesus laid down his life for us as his sheep. The one who, who calls us to follow him as his sheep. The one who knows us calls us, friends. Friends, if if we declare our risen Lord as shepherd of our lives, it means we, we need to allow ourselves to become his sheep. We need to realize that there's a relational commitment between the shepherd and his sheep. The shepherd has the responsibility to protect, to provide for, to care for, to nurture, to feed, to guide his sheep. Whereas the sheep have a responsibility of trustfully following the leading and guiding. Of the shepherd. Now, friends, this is not, not blind abandonment, but why is the servant of God's direction and guidance in and for our lives? As we seek to follow the risen Christ, the one who has overcome the grave, the one who has established a relationship between us and God, we need to acknowledge and trust that God loves us enough to send Jesus, the one who is our shepherd. And as God's children, we need to trust that, that Jesus and God have our best intentions and want the best for us. Because God is with us, wanting us in relationship with God. And Jesus makes it possible as we seek to follow Jesus with all of who we are as the children of God. We, we come into that space of relationship. And part of that is, is the declaration of Jesus' shepherdship, his messiahship, his, his lordship over our lives, friends. So I want to invite you as, as I bring this sermon to a close to, to say with me. Can you say this with me? The Lord is my shepherd. I want to invite you to say it with me, friends. Let's say it together. The Lord is my shepherd. Now there's a big difference between saying the Lord is a good shepherd. The Lord is the good shepherd. And the Lord is my shepherd. Now Jesus is the good shepherd. He, he calls himself that title. But we need to declare that that good shepherd is our shepherd by saying the Lord is my shepherd. Because the good shepherd knows you. He knows you so intimately and he, he loves you. And he pleads with you to, to hear his invitation to come to him for an abundant eternal life. Because that's what he offers as we grow in relationship with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. He would offer us his guidance and his leadership as we seek to follow and grow in our relationship with God. Come to him today. And I want to invite you as we close just to, just to say that, that first five verse, words of, of Psalm 23 with me. Can we say it? Let's close by saying together, the Lord is my shepherd. Can we say it again? The Lord is my shepherd. 
Friends, I want to invite you to spend time with your shepherd this week. Spend time listening to his voice as he calls you by name, as he calls out to you, whatever your name is, in the place in, in which you find yourself. As he leads you and moves with you in the moments of life in which you find yourself at this moment. For the Lord is, is my shepherd. I shall not fear, for he is with me. Friends, with, with that in mind, we, we come to a time of closing prayer. I want to invite you just to, to pray with me in this space as well. Father, we thank you that you are the one who loves us so intimately. Jesus, that, that you are the good shepherd who has laid down your life for us, that paid the price for our sins and brought us, opened the, the gate for us to come into eternal life through you to the Father. And as we come into that space of eternal life with you, that we may realize that what that means of us, that, that following you, obedience to you, loyalty and surrender to your will and your way. Help us, Almighty God, to, to be able to live that out in our lives as we seek to draw nearer into relationship with you in all that we do. So help us to hear what we need to take from the sermon today, Almighty God, and to be able to put it in practice in our lives, in our relationship with you. For we ask this in your precious name, Jesus, for you are our good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. So, Father, we thank you and we ask Walk with us into this next weekend and beyond as our shepherd, calling us in the moments in which we find ourselves, leading us through the moments in which we find ourselves. Help us, care for us, guide us and direct us, we pray. And help us to trust and follow you with all of who we are. For we ask this in your precious name, Jesus, now and always. Amen. Friends, be blessed and know that God is with you. And that as we call out to Jesus as our shepherd, he is the one who guides, protects, leads and directs us. Because God loves us. And Jesus loves us and has made a way for us to come to God. Friends, be blessed now and always. Amen.